Hello, good evening, welcome folks to the Land Tamer stream. We're going to talk about video sites, Twitch and YouTube. We're going to talk a little bit about the five uh, load balancer updates and my updates with the CCIE written, my progress, and a couple of things like that. So let's get into it. I'm going to pull up the chat window. Anybody wants to say hello, something on your mind? Feel free to shout it out. We're going to, we're going to explain this wallpaper here in a minute. Don't worry. Okay, so we're online. Uh, yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about Twitch versus YouTube. And this is something that's important to me uh, because being a streamer and also a, you know, consumer of video, which I consume a lot of, right? So what's kind of sparked this in my mind, this conversation, is something that came out a few days ago. Uh, it may have been last week. But, uh, that, you know, this person who I've been following a while on Twitch... Uh, his site is Ninja, is the name of his channel on Twitch. And he's basically blown up, partly because of multiple circumstances. I mean, I think he's been streaming on Twitch as a gamer for about six years or so, more or less. I could be wrong on that. Um, he's always been a professional, I mean, he's been a professional Halo player for a long time. That's how I knew about him. I've actually seen him in uh, tournaments and things uh, in person. But anyway, uh, he's kind of blown up, and there's a link down here to an interview he had on CNBC. I'm sure he's got more coming up, more interviews. But essentially, this is a gamer who is, he is also on YouTube, but primarily his content uh, comes, is, is on Twitch. He streams. And it's, uh, there's estimates that he makes about, you know, half a million dollars a month just on the subscribers on Twitch. As many of you, you may or may not know, you can subscribe to someone on Twitch. You get different chat emotes, emoticon type things, and, you know, you don't have to watch commercials on the channel if you're a subscriber. But it's like, you know, you can use your Amazon Prime membership. You get at least one Twitch subscription with that. Or you can pay uh, $5. And I've, I've subscribed on off with Tyler for a long time. But anyway, um, that's a lot of money to be for just playing games, you know. Um, but what this has opened up is not just about, and he's actually, if you watch his interview, he is, a, in my opinion, a really good role model for kids who are wanting to do the same thing or play games. Um, he's actually a bright star sort of in the, a lot of the negativity that surrounds Twitch and streamers and gamers and things like that. But anyway, we are going to eventually get to this point of how this applies to, you know, the Land Tamer stream. But to lead into that, so this kind of prompted a tweet by Casey Neistat. You've probably heard me talk about him before. Major YouTube uh, vlogger, YouTuber, uh, has made a lot of money on YouTube and in other business ventures. Um, but he tweeted, he had a tweet related to this interview after he saw it. And I think he said, takeaways one, I don't know Ninja, but he seems like a positive force at a time of socials and desperate need of one. Two, despite her efforts, the woman interview was still condescending. And three, if YouTube isn't scared of Twitch yet, now is a good time to ring the alarms. Now, Casey has made his, you know, a lot of money off of YouTube. He's achieved a lot of notoriety and fame from his YouTube channel, which is awesome. Um... If you follow him on Twitch, you'll see his posts about his YouTube channel. You'll be able to watch it there. But I've gone back and watched a lot of his vlogs. He's inspired me in a lot of ways, including the sunglasses, um, in presenting content. But anyway, this kind of brings up something that really Casey Neistat has been bringing this up quite a bit about YouTube, complaints about YouTube. A lot of content uh, creators on YouTube have there have been a lot of controversies with them and a lot of discontent among YouTube content creators. I have some of those complaints. I'm not a major YouTuber, but um, I understand some of it. Uh, it's been in the news with some of the controversies surrounding, you know, the, the suicide that was on YouTube and other things that have come out on YouTube and the treatment by YouTube of its algorithm for searches 
YouTube Kids has had a lot of controversies about how they've handled things there. So yeah, it, it's not an easy job, I'm sure, if you work at YouTube to control everything, you know, and to rein in your platform. I understand it's a challenge, but you know, I think a lot of what Casey Neistat has blogged about is the communications, the lack of transparency sometimes that YouTube has, um, and in particular with its content creators. So, you know, look out. There's a lot of competition. A lot of people have said, well, what other platform is there besides YouTube if you're going to post videos? There's Vimeo and there's some others. But, you know, none of them has the breadth and the popularity and the power and the, you know, acceptance that YouTube has. That's where people go. You, when you want to figure out how to do something, you know, find it on YouTube. Search for it on YouTube. So I think it's great that Twitch is now the, this this issue, you know, this success of Ninja, Tyler Blevins, has shed some light on Twitch's potential. And I think it is a potential competitor to YouTube in a lot of ways. Um, the platform is a, little, is a little different in terms of on-demand videos, what I call on-demand videos. Um, and I think that kind of leads to the other conversation here, and that is streaming versus what I call on-demand. Um, and I'm not talking about television. To me, that's a completely different consumption model. I'm talking about, you know, social media content creation and delivery. And I've really seen a trend towards uh, consumption towards the streaming side, live streaming, which is so much different because when you're watching streaming, you're in the moment. Yes, on Twitch, you can go back. And watch, for example, Ninja's videos from the past. Um, you can watch my videos that I've vlogged up to. I'm not a partner, so there's only like, you know, 20 videos worth or something like that. And then they, they disappear. But that's kind of the platform of Twitch, you know. And I think that has a lot to do with our generation or generations and our attention spans are different. So... A lot of times when people are watching YouTube, even if it's something they've looked up specifically, we're multitasking, right? It's not always the best thing to do. I don't completely agree that that's a good thing to do in a lot of cases uh, to try to multitask, but it's what we do. You know, you see it all the time. People are watching Netflix and they're on their phone. So Twitch is more, t in my mind, streaming in general is more geared towards that sort of audience like I don't expect anyone to go back on my videos and sit there and watch all of them from beginning to end I'm a streamer you know uh, I'm more I fall more into the streamer content realm uh, live streaming and that's what I enjoy doing that's what I enjoy consuming and you know that's where a lot of future growth is I think um, now YouTube and on-demand videos definitely have their place and they're still going to be they're not going anywhere, right? But I think the platform is going to help compete and maybe push YouTube to address some of these issues that they have and maybe realize they're not such a monopoly anymore. And I think it's also going to offer more for you and I to consume in terms of streaming and on-demand videos. And I hope Twitch does more to push content providers um, in on-demand videos as well to, to provide more competition to YouTube. YouTube does streaming also. You can stream on YouTube, but that doesn't seem to have really caught on. Like in particular in the gaming world where that's become big, there aren't a lot of big YouTube um, streamers. And now a lot of them have seen what Tyler's done, the money that he's making, and they are going on to, you know, a streaming platform. They're doing more streaming on Twitch. Um, so anyway, I think it's all good. Uh, what does this mean for me? Uh, well, as many of you know, if you watch this channel, I streamed on YouTube for a while. It was a little bit awkward sort of platform for me because I'm so used to Twitch and how resilient it is for streaming. But it just seemed to be better for me to try to build an audience on YouTube. And I have built somewhat of, of an audience, uh, a small one, but uh, very catered towards a very specific sort of topic. Um, but you know, it, it's great. I, I like YouTube. I like the platform. 
But recently, as you know, I'm, I'm no longer streaming live on YouTube. I'm try, I've been trying it on Twitch for a while. I like it. The chat to me is better. Um, not that there's a lot of chat yet in this channel. Uh, hopefully there will be more as it grows. But the capabilities of chat, uh, the, con the integration with Discord, and basically all the things that gamers have been doing for a while on Twitch and succeeding and providing excellent content and live delivery and interaction with with viewers i really that really appeals to me so i'm going to continue to try to leverage this platform uh for this you know for this channel and any future channels i might do maybe even some business related so yes yeah, so i'm going to continue with twitch and just see where that goes um streaming it related it's very difficult um to see yet where that is going to go you know Twitch right now is, you know, there's some channels for what are called IRL in real life. You've got auto mechanics. You've got police officers on, on patrol. Uh, you've got travel, vloggers, streamers. Um, the vast majority of what is out on Twitch is gamers playing games. But there are niches. There's uh, programming, uh, people develop, writing software on Twitch. And they're doing it all for free, right? What is the payback for them? Uh, well, I've blogged about that in the past. You know, it's for me, it's kind of accountability and uh, forcing me to sort of organize my thoughts and prepare them for, for these vlogs and for the stream and to talk, to verbalize what I'm learning. It really helps me. But in the future, who knows? Um, I'd have seen a good, you know, there's quite a bit of content, IT related, engineering related content on YouTube. Again, it tends to be short. It tends to be very, very specific. You don't see a lot of streamers yet, technology streamers. I hope that changes. It's difficult and challenging in one way because uh, we can't do it while we're working because you know we can't reveal proprietary information about whatever company we're working for or whatever client or work we're doing. You know that's proprietary and confidential information. Um, but personal projects people can do. If you look at uh, uh, Dimitri Fiegel's Twitch channel, um, he's developed a little bit of a following there, and it's great. You know, he's working on personal projects, and he's sharing, and I hope to see a lot more of that. So if you're thinking about doing it, it's real easy to start a stream on Twitch. It's free in terms of the using the service. Um, you know, all you need is your PC and whatever tools you use on your PC. That's my setup is down here. It's pretty basic. I have a nice mic. Uh, I need better lighting. My lighting is horrible. Um, it's not too good, but my next milestone, we're going to be upgrading the lighting. But it's not real hard. You can get started sharing content, interacting with people, meeting new people, and it's, it's a great place to do it. So time will tell what happens. Stay tuned, of course. Uh, I want to talk about another topic. It's going to be brief today, guys. Again, I'm just kind of vlogging about where I'm at on, on a number of things. This is more related to kind of what I do for work with F5. I do a, a good bit of work with the F5 platform, and they finally came out with, you know, they've been very cautious, understandably so, with the Spectre and Meltdown patching. A lot of testing was required. You know, F5 platforms t tend to be um, one thing they advertise and that they consider important to the platform is speed, you know. Uh, processing speed with uh, SSL proxying and a lot of other functions. The fear is, well, we do want to address this vulnerability, but we want to not necessarily slow our systems down. Some of these are very high transaction systems where, where the F5 uh, is inserted. So anyway, there's a link down here. If you do this for work, if you're interested in it, um, they did come out with an upgraded version that addresses it. To an extent, I think it calls, uh, there's a Spectre, um, let me just open the link so you can see it. Yeah, there's a number, I mean, they've done a good job at communicating that they're working on it, and now they have released this advisory, and it's interesting, they call it Spectre Variant 1 and Spectre Variant 2, so, and then there's a vulnerability meltdown that they've, they've come out and addressed, so, anyway, if you're interested in that, it's good. I would like to vlog a little more about uh, F5, uh, just general things. Um, 
load balancing and HTTP traffic and things like that. Uh, it's fascinating stuff. So what am I working on right now? Well, recent topics is you may have seen a post VSS, um, virtual switching system. Man, um, I have worked on these systems before, but I have never delved into the depth of some of the topics that are just covered in the written. Uh, of course, these are not really going to be covered in the lab, but um, yeah, some of these go pretty in depth. Same with CEF. Um, I'm just now getting into this, and so, you know, good stuff. I have, as it says there, I'm running low on video content because I have, in going through the checklist, which I have here. In my lab checklist, and yes, folks, 80 days ago, um, we're about to be in the sevens here. Uh, that is not the correct one. That is a lab checklist. That's a blueprint checklist. Yeah, 80 days left. So I have watched a lot of the videos that are the source of information here. And I'm getting down to just where I'm going to be reading all the time. Reading and testing in, in Boson, of course. So that is where I'm at. Those are the areas I'm, I am on. I'm going to do a, a vlog about this later, kind of a general review of INE written video course or content. Um, you know, I, I bash on them sometimes, but overall, I'm very pleased with them. I just found a new set of videos, which is awesome. Um, it is called, I think they're called questions videos. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So they have, it kind of stuck up on me here. There's a layer three technologies. But as you can see here, um, go back to this. Layer three technologies review questions. So what this is, is Brian McGannick sitting down, throwing up sort of simulated questions that might be on, you know, the written exam, and then reviewing each answer in the video, why each, um, selection is either right or wrong and so far it has been awesome he's covered a lot of stuff in OSPF I've gone through two videos so far there are three four four man I wish there were more um, but this is really good stuff and that's part of what I'm going to review as well overall part of the the INE video content so yeah I've done some of that and it's really good stuff did some of those at lunch today so again, Meat Chunks, I've uh, talked about this. Great interview. If, if you're, I know a lot of people in IT are interested in gaming. Come on, folks. I know you are. Um, so you probably already know about, you might already know about Ninja playing Fortnite and having played with Drake the other day. And uh, Kim.com, remember him? Um, from Mega Upload days, fleeing to other countries, trying to escape the U.S. Uh, authorities. He got on there and played with uh, Ninja the other day uh, several times. Interesting stuff, but um, yeah, check that out. And then that Friday release. This is a great blog by, by CCIE by 30, which again, you know, we've talked a little bit about streaming and this really goes along with uh, building your personal brand as a network engineer. Uh, CCIE by 30 is relatively new uh, poster, at least is new to me. Um, she has started this bl uh, blog and this so far is our best one, I think. It's brief, but man, it really calls out something that I believe strongly in, and that is developing your personal brand. It's something that I'm working very hard on uh, myself. And then show IP interface brief. Um, Tony E put out another challenge video. Definitely check him out. You can follow him on Twitter. He, he finds these little challenges, uh, networking challenges, and takes them head on, you know, and tries to um, solve the puzzle and figure it out and lab it in some cases. So, you know, check out his YouTube page, subscribe to him because he comes up, you know, he finds some pretty cool challenges out there and tries to, you know, uh, assist the community or share those with the community. So that's going to be it tonight, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come back and see us soon here at the Land Hammer stream. We'll probably be t uh, streaming some this weekend, vlogging a little bit. And... Thanks again for stopping by. Please uh, like this video if you see it on YouTube or follow me on uh, Twitch if you haven't already. And we shall see you soon back here in the Lamb Tamer stream. I hope you get all the good bits 
and keep on studying folks